or do they? Dusty Baker seems to feel like he wants to go with one of the young guns in camp at leadoff. Or does he? There's a lot of questions to go over on this edition of the Locked On Astros podcast. And we're going to talk about that now. Hello and welcome to Locked On Astros, your daily Astros podcast. Here are your hosts, Eric the Man Heisman and Brett. H-Town Wheelhouse Chansey. We are Locked On Houston Astros, and we hope that you join us for a daily Locked On Astros podcast. My name is Eric Eisman. You can find me on Twitter at Eric Talk Stros. You can find the show at Locked On Astros, your team every day. Brett, where can you find you at? They can find me at H Town Wheelhouse on Twitter and on Instagram and at Stros411 on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Always positive, always Stros. All righty. It, it's great during your intro when an ad pops up in your ear and distracts you. So that was awesome. But you know what uh, you should be not distracted about? Subscribing on the Locked on Astros podcast on YouTube and making us your first listen every day. Whether it's on YouTube, keep on subscribing to us and keep on listening to us on your way to work, on your uh, Apple, Odyssey, Spotify, wherever you're listening to your podcast. Keep on listening to Locked on Astros podcast. And today we're going to talk about something that I kind of mentioned jokingly the a uh, couple podcasts ago about Jeremy Pena leading off. And is that going to happen? Dusty Baker has tried it twice out of Jeremy Pena's three starts this year um, in spring training. So we're going to talk about that. And also, it seems like um, MLB has proposed some new anti-cheating rules, um, <laughs> sign-stealing rules. And you might think, oh, well, it's about the Astros. What if it's about what's about to come with the letter that's about to be unsealed with the Yankees? So that's one of the topics we'll discuss on uh, today's podcast. So, uh, Brett, uh, first of all, uh, that was an awesome episode you did yesterday about Jeremy Pena. And it seems like everybody is clamoring about this kid. How good can this kid be? If y'all want to go check that out, go check out um, Jeremy Pena is a superstar. I think that word superstar may be a little bit big right now, but I know that's, uh, that's what Jose Altuve said, but uh, we'll have to see. No, yeah, definitely. He, if you look at his grades, and that's what we did, um, we we look for what gives us the foundation or the reasoning behind all the buzz around Jeremy Pena. And that's why we went over his defensive and offensive grades, went over his power, what he needs to fix in his swing, what we like in his swing. So we really go into detail with Lindsey Crosby from Locked On um, MLB Prospects or Locked On Farm on Twitter. So go check that out, please. Jeremy Pena, definitely Eric, is one of these guys that they've had a lot of confidence in since last season. They wouldn't have put him on the taxi squad for the playoffs if they didn't think he could do so, if he if they doubted him right like right. he had a broken hand broken wrist last year and he missed several games and he was still one of the taxi squad guys that says high praise for this guy again he's got a major league pedigree now do we expect him i mean he's not Bobby Witt Jr. He's not the top prospect overall, but Jeremy Pena is the kind of kid that's been around the major leagues. He has the makeup. He has the physical makeup. He has the mental makeup to where we are going to really have to um, in Dusty We Trusty like the shirt came out last year. Yeah. So if uh, we'll talk about some of the stats from the leadoff hitters last year and what uh, Jeremy Pena did with Sugarland Skeeters last year, but could this be the potential lineup? This was today's lineup today. Granted, Jordan Alvarez missed the lineup, missed today's game with uh, personal reasons. Uh, we're not going to delve into that. If this was a um, playoff game, then we might be saying, "What you doing, Alvarez?" But uh, this is not that type of game. But this was the lineup for today. It was Jeremy Pena leading off. Jose Altuve batting second, Michael Brantley at the DH spot, Bregman batting um, fourth, then Tucker batting fifth, Guriel batting sixth, then uh, Brinson was in right field uh, batting seventh, then McCormick batting eighth, and then Malnado batting ninth. So if this was the everyday lineup and uh, Alvarez was um, actually playing. I would expect maybe him and maybe Brantley switching. I think you want Alvarez higher in the lineup. 
So um, that's what I would think if this was a potential everyday lineup. But um, I I don't really see I don't see that uh, as good as Brantley is. If you're not going to bat him second, then I don't see him batting um, that. I mean, but before Alvarez, and we know that Dusty and we trusty, but you know that he trusties the uh, right left uh, scenario. You're muted. He does. He likes going right left. He likes going um, with the one guy hits from one side, one guy hits from another, kind of give you different options there at the plate. There are many ways to go about this. And I know here's the thing. Some people are saying, not just here, just just in general, okay, y'all are y'all are putting the cart before the horse. Y'all are y'all are putting too much on this kid, or um, y'all don't trust him enough. The bottom line is this. You and I, the people that watch the show, the people that that the, that produce these shows, podcasters, even commentators, even the most seasoned TV radio commentators, they're not the managers, they're not the GMs. We don't have all the numbers, but I can tell you this that if there was a doubt in Dusty Baker's mind that this kid couldn't do the job. There's no way he would put his neck on the line or his reputation on the line and say the things that he's saying about Jeremy Pena. So while people can say, well, how many major league at bats has he had? Everybody's a rookie. Everybody starts at one point. So we're not saying that Jeremy Pena is the next coming of anybody. We're not saying that he's the next Correa because he's not. He's Jeremy Pena. And no, he is better than Robel Garcia. And that's why he's in the position to be the starting shortstop. Um, Samuel keeps pining for Robel, saying he's better. It's two different players. I promise you. I promise you. Okay, no, I, let me <laughs> let me address this because he's an active member um, that watches probably every show, but that is a ridiculous comparison, and you know it. It's not genuine. J- um, Jeremy Pena, he may not hit for high average. He's a rookie, but he has a plus defensive side. He has an elite glove. He has an elite arm, and his ceiling is really high. His floor is basically a decent major league shortstop, and his ceiling is is perennial all-star. So whether he's leading off or in the middle of the lineup, I'll trust Dusty with that. Here's what I think should happen. If you're asking me to be the manager, I'm going to bat Payne lower in the lineup to see how he performs. Once his performance and confidence level gets to a certain point, I will push him up. The only time I put him in leadoff is if I feel like he has a hot bat and I need to put Altuve on a rest or I need to put Altuve at DH, and I want to move him down the lineup for contact. For me, I don't start Jeremy Pena at leadoff. But then again, I also haven't had as many years logged as Dusty Baker. All right, so apparently before he got scratched during personal reasons, Alvarez was scheduled to hit fifth. Uh, Yuli was scheduled to bat six, and Cal Tucker was bat- scheduled to bat seventh. So B- Baker still has one of the best hitters in the game batting seventh in the lineup. So I, I don't understand that. Uh, so does that mean that we have Michael Brantley while he's a good contact hitter? It, it Does he really justify having him batting second or third in the lineup? I mean, yes, he's one of the best, better hitters in game, but I would want Kyle Tucker up higher in the lineup. I mean, yeah, I, I think, you know, honestly, I, I think that's correct. I want I want Kyle Tucker producing. So so here's the argument. Altuve gets on base. Altuve's got speed. Kyle Tucker, contact. Do you want Kyle Tucker, though, third? Or do you want him, I mean, heck, do you want to lean up? You want him higher because he makes contact, right? You can always put Brantley in six. You can put Guriel fifth. I don't know. Brantley, I think, hits anywhere in the lineup. I think no matter where he is, he hits. Um, It's just a matter of speed. If you put Brantley too high, he doesn't have speed. You don't want him being the first or second guy to cross the plate for a run, Um, especially if you got hits and action on the field. You want him being more the guy driving the people in, right? Right. Um, So I think it makes perfect sense to move Tucker up. Some people have said put Tucker in the leadoff. I don't know that he's the leadoff hitter. No, but he hits for contact. He hits for average. I wouldn't bet on Tucker leading off. I think that they needed him with runners on base. And I know, as Altuve said, we'll get to that in a second. You only lead off once in a game. So I wouldn't bet on him leading off. But 
Uh, we'll talk about that and more. So speaking of betting, let's talk about betting online. Okay, so Mike Krzyzewski just made it back to another Final Four. There's a possibility that the title game could be North Carolina versus Mike Krzyzewski, and it is going to be a great Final Four. We hate to see that the Cougs are out, but the national championship is coming here, and it's coming quick. BetOnline.net is your number one source for all your betting needs and sports info for all the latest odds, contests, and player props, you name it. BetOnline remains the best spot for all your latest sports developments, including podcasts and reviews from all the leagues this season. And it's not just basketball. BetOnline is your continued source for all your sports wagering information needs, including live betting and your favorite Vegas casino games. Head to the website today or use your mobile device and learn more about the trends and action. BetOnline, where the game starts. So I know you had Lindsey Crosby on yesterday, but guys, y'all need to go check on the lock, check out the Locked On Bets. Uh, sorry, Locked On Bets, Locked On MLB Prospects podcast. Um, he does a really good job, like not just going over to Astros Farm System, but going on all the different um, minor league system. And so go ch- check out the Locked On MLB Prospects podcast with Lindsey Crosby. And if he knows that much about Jeremy Pena, just imagine how much he knows about the top prospects out there. So go check him out, if, uh, whether you're getting ready for your fantasy draft or whatever you're doing. So um, let's go ahead and look at what the Astros uh, leadoff hitters did last year. I'm not going to look at the home runs because I'm not going to put that expectation on Jeremy Pena. Uh, we know what Jose Altuve did last year. I'm not going to put look at the RBIs. We know what Altuve did last year. But last year, um, leading uh, off, uh, they batted 277 with an on-base percentage of 345, a slugging percentage of 476, uh, OPS of 821, uh, and a uh, so basically, and only seven stolen bases with 130 runs scored. Okay, so if you look at what um, Jeremy Pena did last year, or actually in a his career minor league um, on base percentage, he has a 371 on base percentage. So that translates really well for a a leadoff hitter. He he's it, got some speed. He can I, I don't know if he's going to get a lot of stolen bases, but he's kind of got that Springer type speed, the Carlos Correa's type speed, where he, um, he can go first to third really quickly. Yeah, exactly. And so one of the things that I like what, um, you know, Jay Roberts um, mentions here in the comment section is that he does take a decent amount of pitches. We talked about that last night with Lindsey Crosby. He takes a ton of pitches. He doesn't swing. He's not a chaser. Um, his strikeout rate is slightly up and gone up since his power has raised. Right. But he is a disciplined hitter. So it's kind of a weird dichotomy that we have here. He's disciplined but he strikes out a lot. He swings at good pitches, okay? And so if he sees a lot of pitches and draws a lot of walks, that's huge because your your second guy, if if you see one pitch or you see two pitches and you're popping out and you're grinding out, that really doesn't help the batter behind you. And we'll talk about it later, but with all these like anti-stealing sign rules that they're coming in, it sounds like they're going to make it harder for them to in-game plan and in-game strategize with batters and pitchers on the mound, and that may make things difficult. So someone leading off, Eric, could be very, very beneficial. Um, One of the things I do expect out of Jose Altuve is if he's going to be hitting for contact and not trying to jack the ball over the fence every time he goes up to the plate, maybe he sees more pitches and maybe his walks go up. Can you imagine the first and second batter being Altuve and Pena or Pena and Altuve, and then your third and fourth guys have seen 12, 14 pitches? It makes your lineup deeper. Oh, man, it just, I mean, it really helps. And then, I mean, it helps your bottom guys. It it helps your McCormicks. It helps your Maldies. I mean, you know, those guys are going to get hits eventually. And, gosh, if, if McCormick could straighten and flatten his swing out just a little bit, that guy has some absolute power that he needs to unleash this year. I, I hope McCormick does well with his time because he he's going to have to fill a big hole with Myers being out. Yeah, and uh, it seems like McCormick is actually um, is a starting center fielder by default, uh, but it seems like Dusty Baker has already declared him the center fielder opening day. But let's hear what Dusty Baker has to say. Thoughts by Dusty. All right, Altuve led off because everyone asked him to lead off, not because that's where he feel comfortable. You want guys to feel comfortable. 
You assume he's leading off because he's shorter in stature. That's not right. I want guys to feel comfortable where they're hitting. It's not a video game where you just put guys where you want to put them. Everyone has a preferred place in the batting order. That's basically what uh, Dusty Baker said. It's not a video game. You don't just put everybody where you want to put them. So, <laughs> no, okay. So, I don't know that I agree with his assessment or understanding of video games. Um, I, I, I think he might be a little inaccurate. No offense, but Dusty Baker probably doesn't play a lot of video games. Probably doesn't well, he might play have played the old NES. Uh, <laughs> he played. He played um, micro league baseball or pong. I'm sorry. Um, I, I'm my bad. No. So I understand where he's going with this, Eric. And I think it's a very valid quote that you bring up thoughts by dusty. I love it. That it's back. Um, but that being said, if you're statistically driven, if you're analytically driven, you can't deny that Jose Altuve's spot as a leadoff hitter has been more successful than not. Yeah. The opening day game is against Shohei Otani. Right. Don't throw Jeremy Pena to the fire the first game. Don't what do if that he, to what him. What if he excels and then he gets this you know, cocky attitude? He becomes no, well, hey, Alec, Bre- Alex Bergman. Good counterpoint, but this isn't a video game. <laughs> Baker also said, I'm trying things. Uh, that's what spring training is all about. I'm trying uh, as many things as I can in a short period of time. But I got to talk to these guys. Communication is key to anything. We ain't playing no video games. We'll see. So I guess that's two times he said. <laughs> we're Man, not playing does, no games. Does he's probably over there like got the headset and he's like, I'm going to get you, fool. Like, he's probably like <laughs> playing against kids and stuff. And uh, You think awesome. he plays Fortnite now? Do uh, you think the guys I hope play he Fortnite. doesn't play because apparently Fortnite is not – it's not the it's bomb not cool anymore, anymore as the kids no. say. Yeah, it's it's not cool, right? Um, yeah. yeah, that's like so lame. It's Overwatch, Dad, or whatever. whatever uh, but the, just GTA, remember, whatever. like, um, not being cool anymore. Remember last year, Miles Straw and Carlos Correa, they were kind of being uh, tested as the leadoff hitters. Um, and, like, I think that uh, that he was basically trying those guys out. And then who led off for most of the season? It was Jose Altuve. So this may be all for naught. So we may be doing having this whole discussion for nothing. Like, we may see Jeremy Pena. I mean, it's only been two out of three starts. And he had a great game. He, uh, he had um, he basically had a Jose Altuve at bat in his first at bat. And then his second um, – a bat he had another hit i believe or maybe his third bat i forgot which one it was but he's looking good at the plate he's got a 375 batting average but uh, last year we thought that for sure carlos cray was gonna well, not for sure but we had a inkling that carlos cray was gonna be the open days um leadoff hitter because he had that power that george springer did but then what did they do they went back to uh mr hey he's mr leadoff hi just go ahead and put me in the leadoff spot. And so, yeah, you know, the bottom line is this, this lineup is powerful. This lineup is chock full of tools that tools of hitting, whether it's, whether it's power, whether it's gap power, whether it's hitting the opposite field, spraying the ball over the field. I mean, whatever the lineup order is, I think it will work. And I'm not saying that because I don't want to commit to one lineup or another, but you've got so many veterans. Jeremy Pena is the least most traveled MLB guy because he is the true rookie. Zero MLB regular season games, okay? What an advantage this kid has being on a veteran-laden team, on a team that has more playoff appearances than any team in MLB in the last 20, 30 years. So I think... The position that he's in is apropos. If Dusty Baker leads him off, good for Jeremy Pena. I think he takes it, and I think he embraces it. Will he fail? Will he succeed? I don't know. I just know that he'll do his homework. He's been around Major League Baseball his whole life, so that counts for something. And and there's a lot of father-son stories, Eric, that we know. The King Griffey Jr., King Griffey Sr., Barry Bonds, Bobby Bonds, these father-son combos. Sometimes these kids that had major league fathers turn out to be better than their fathers. And I think Jeremy Pena has a very good chance of being better than Geronimo Pena. All right, so we're going to go ahead and close out this conversation with uh, Dusty Baker saying this young man is playing well. 
he just came out of winter ball, so he's probably f- further along than some of the guys are here. I'm not going to put any pressure on him. Just go out and play. So he's not going to declare him the man. He's not going to say, you're my number one guy. I'm going to put you at number one. You're going to be my leadoff guy. He's just going to let him go out there and play baseball, and he's going to probably alternate him between the leadoff spot and then the number eight spot, and he's just going to have some fun and just let him play some baseball. All right. <laughs> keep going all right so the astros also option force whitley down to minor league camp also hunter brown and john oslack whatever however you say his name but that's not uh surprising uh whitley was not going to be probably a factor until mid no anyway pena watch pena i mean not pena whitley will probably pitch a lot of the season in triple a yeah i'm assuming they start him in double a to get his feet wet he'll end up in sugarland probably late may early june he has the potential to be a late season call up and that might help if justin verlander gets to his 130 inning threshold they might start using some days for him not to pitch to get some rest so they don't have to use him up too much in the playoffs oh speaking of innings did you see that they let um, Max Scherzer throw like 89 or 90 pitches today in the spring training game. He's Max Scherzer. I'm just saying, I was like, oh my God, this dude's already throwing complete He's, he's one of the guys he's from a, the Players Association stud. committee that did not retire. So <laughs> I'm just, no, yeah, I was just, Andrew I was Miller. just, no, it's all good. <laughs> no, I just, I was just shocked that like, wow. I was like that. That's like, are you going to, are you guys going to ruin your $45 million investment? But whatever it's Max Scherzer. Um, speaking of Hunter Brown, Hunter Brown had a good showing this spring and he, this guy is probably going to, I don't know when he's going to get a chance, but this guy's going to get a chance. He only allowed three hits, one run, and five and two-thirds innings this spring. He opened some eyes. He already got uh, sent down to minor league camp, but he, he this is not his time. The Astros will get their time, but his, his time will come, but it's not now. The right. Astros He's, have too many pitchers as is. His issue is control on on once he gets two strikes is keeping the ball in the zone he talked about that his first day of spring training and he will be a top ace i mean there is a reason why he's being compared to justin verlander everything he does on the mound looks exactly like justin verlander and he has a potential to be a pitcher like that he's a big body he's got he's got really good stuff but it's controlling those secondary pitches right. That has been his issue. Once he gets that down, you could see Hunter Brown maybe as a midseason um, fill-in starter if if they need to joss around, if maybe some injuries happen or whatever. But Hunter Brown's got a bright future with this club. I, I, fully, I feel that he's going to make an impact at some point um, at Minute Maid Park or on a road game. And if you're waiting in line to get in Minute Maid Park, why don't you grab a Bilt Bar? A Bilt Bar is great for waiting in lines. That's right. And even better than that, the Final Four, opening day, the NBA and NHL playoffs, these all should get any sports fan excited. And when you get excited about sports, it makes you want to get out there and get on a court. You know, you know, go out to the field until the football. Get on the ice rink and skate if you live up north. It's the perfect get-up-and-go bar. It's built bar. Not only is it wrapped on 100% chocolate, but it's good for you. If you haven't heard, they have this thing called a Built Puff. The Built Puff is a protein-infused marshmallow puff wrapped in 100% chocolate. It's good for you. It's like a candy bar, but it's not. It's they got yummy cinnamon churro. They've got coconut marshmallow, banana cream pie. The sky's the limit. Built Bars are the only protein bars that are wrapped in 100% chocolate that don't fill you full of stuff you don't need. Low calorie, high protein to replace those candy bars. 130 to 160 calories, 17 grams of protein, three to four grams of sugar, three to four grams of net carbs. Go to built.com and use the promo code LOCKED15 to get 15% off your order. That's LOCKED15 to get 15% off at built.com, the best bar in the biz. I am totally kidding here, but I'm really glad that Chaz McCormick has won the opening day center fielder job. He's batting zero this spring, and he struck <laughs> out three times today. He, to let me tell you, his – no, okay. So I was, I was listening to the game today, and Sparks and Ford were actually talking about that. 
And um, one of the, the reason why you have spring training is because your bat speed is not where it needs to be. Cause obviously most guys haven't been playing right. and not everybody put, plays winter ball. Chaz McCormick appears to be behind the fastball. And so he's swinging and missing because he's late on the pitches and that will come in due time. What Chaz McCormick gives you though, is if he's able to have walks, if he's able to not swing and chase pitches and get on base, he can move around. Once he gets on first, he can get to third, possibly home in some situations. So, um, Chaz McCormick's not going to be the guy that's going to pay dividends with the bat, but he's going to be very valuable out in the field with the glove. And once he gets on base and remember they can platoon him with Jose Siri, Jose Siri can get some starts, get out there. They can pinch hit for each other. So Chaz McCormick will do fine. He said he wants to be the guy. He said he wants to be known as a starting center fielder. He, he wants it to be his job. And so, Hey, I'm here for a healthy center field competition. I think Chaz McCormick will be just fine. All righty. So we kind of teased this at the beginning show. Uh, I mean, I do want to talk about Luis Garcia before the end of the show, but I do want to talk about this. According to um, Britt uh, Garoli, uh, she said that MLB has re recently made several new proposals to Plaser Players Association with an emphasis on sign stealing. Here they are. MLB proposed uh, prohibiting batters from re reviewing scouting cards or information during a bat. Uh, example, a hitter cannot be reviewing a scouting card placed in his helmet during a bat. Okay. Okay. Uh, I have a question. Have you ever seen a hitter look at his helmet at a scouting report? No, I've seen maybe uh, like I've seen pitchers. Outfielders. I've seen outfielders. I've seen, outfielders. Like I've seen where pitchers. They, yeah. Right, they have a they have a scorecard. So, mm -hmm. I mean, honestly, I don't think I've ever seen that. And I was like, wait, have I? And I I tried to think back on all the games I've watched. I'm like, what? Well, I haven't on, seen anybody do this. Like, oh, that's one. Yeah. <laughs> MLB also proposed that beginning with the first pitch of the game, club personnel may not print any scouting information for the purposes of providing it to on-field club personnel during a game. Example, no club employees can print and deliver information mid-game to the dugout. Okay. MLB also proposed permitting pitchers and catchers to use wire wireless pitch comm devices on a completely voluntary basis. So basically, they can communicate back and forth together. So they don't have to do the pitch signs anymore. So it's like a wireless device. It's like... Oh, so the pitcher, the catcher's not going to hold signs anymore? Right. So it's basically like, okay, I want to do this. And it goes to the catcher. Something like hold that. Hold on. Okay. So, so uh, it says clubs and players have access to these devices now during spring training for testing during. Bullpen. Now they have, they have access to them, but th that doesn't mean they're going to use them exclusively right. though. Right. And it's a voluntary basis. Oh gosh. This sounds like a disaster. This, this, this reminds me, and I won't say the store when I worked at a retail store a few years ago, they gave us these really cool devices. Okay. Let's say it was, they called it our work iPhones, right? This is just mm -hmm. my case. And the work iPhone, we were supposed to use it to check customers out instead of having them go through the through the cash register because it would speed things up. It was a medicated disaster. It was something, it was terrible. I would be trying to check people out, type in their email on this little thing, had to slide their card. It wasn't like it was the biggest joke. It lasted like two months and all the because all the GMs were like, you got to do this. District managers were like, you got to do this. It, it was a terrible program. That to me sounds like they got together with these guys from our old retail store and goes, hey, let's let's try this derpy thing. What, is it going to be like the calculator watch from the 80s where like, you know, <laughs> you know how Dwight's doing the math? Yeah. Like, this is stupid. Like, just let the catchers put their hand signals down. And if a guy on first or second sees your signs and he catches them, tip off the batter and freaking knock the ball in the Crawford boxes. Qu quit trying to change the game so much that you ruin it, Rob Manfred. Uh, Rob Manfred, I am on a full-on campaign. Rob Manfred needs to be fired and removed from baseball. He's bad for baseball. Also, for the uh, final proposal, MLB proposed permitting the New York Yankees uh, for using cameras in the outfield to go ahead and get signals from the catchers to uh, relay to the dugout for them to cheat. Wait, did you just make that up? Yes, I did. Oh, I was like, wait, surely he's kidding Okay. I had you for a second, right? <laughs> you well, bec yeah, because you're reading off the sheet. So I'm 
I trust you, Eric. I trust you. Yeah. So uh, this, these are that last thing was uh, made up, by the way. Oh, but... speaking of, speaking of, guess who I think is cheating already? Who? The Yankees. You know why? Why? Marwan Gonzalez hit a home run for him today, and it was an absolute moonshot. And I said I mean, the Yankees are. Things. And well, it was. I mean, they've probably got more advanced things like TV cameras, like they've been using since the seventies. Um, but Marvel Gonzalez hit a home run, and I was like, "Yes, he's cheating again." <laughs> well, like a lot of people would say, well, this is in response to the Astros, but I really don't think this is to do with Astros. I think this has more to do with what's going up. Um, that uh, that has something to do with what's about to come with the Yankees having to unseal whatever's in that letter. So we'll see what's coming up with that. I don't want to uh, dwell too much in that, but Luis Garcia is basically doing a great job with uh, pitching. He actually uh, is, they're going to count on him a lot this year to, uh, to um, especially Lance McCuller it's out for extended time. So he actually pitched today. This was the first time he pitched this spring and he pitched uh, 35 pitches in two innings. He struck out three, walked one batter, he allowed one hit. He threw uh, 20 strikes and averaged about 93.3 miles per hour with his fastball. And he said, I feel great. I was trying to throw strikes today, and it was okay. I didn't have an issue with my velocity today. I It was like normal, so I'm okay. Uh, but Dusty Baker was also impressed with uh, Garcia's slider during the two innings, but he was surprised with the command that he had on his pitch. He said he was good. And I was impressed that this was the first time out. And uh, as long as he feels good, as long as he feels like he's in shape, then everything is fine. So if Luis Garcia is really great, and then we have Justin Verlander, who's who's basically leading baseball right now. Let me see where is it. He's, um, yeah, the pitchers with the longest active streaks of tossing five plus innings. Justin Verlander has 33 straight games. Oh, wow. Uh, Max Fried is um, second with 20. Uh, Zach Wheeler and Jose Urias are both at 17. And then now, is Cal, this regular season and postseason combined? I think this is just regular season. Okay. So um, Justin Verlander has a lot riding. I mean, that's a pretty good streak to have. Um, no, that for, is. That is huge. And, you know, what I love is that JV is back. Um, Luis Garcia Runner up, rookie of the year pitcher, the best rookie pitcher last year, logged 151 innings. That's huge. So that's going to speak. That's going to be work really well for the Astros. Um, Jose Arquiti, and it's just, I really, really like this rotation. And even if Jake Odorizzi is that fifth starter, um, that's fine with me because I think we have enough in the tank. The big question mark, I think, going into the season, Eric, is the bullpen. And before we get to the bullpen question is the or the superlative to that is the starters have to go five to six innings. They cannot falter. They cannot stumble the way they did, I guess, about midseason last year. Remember when they we struggled and I mean they were lasting two, three innings. I mean, they can't do that. And I think Zach Grinky not being here will kind of help that because Zach Grinky seemed to be a little off to begin the season. Um, and you know, he's older, he's got a more unorthodox style and everything. I really like who we have. I like our young players. And I really think that our pitching staff is going to be one of the better starting pitching staffs in major league baseball. Yeah. And the bullpen, we'll have to see how it comes together. I know Hector Neris will add a different dimension, but, uh, we did lose Kendall Graveman, who was a pretty key asset, but at times he was mortal. Sometimes he was Thor last year. So, I mean, it just, there was times last year where he was really good and sometimes he was just really bad. So, but uh, Brian Abreu was supposed to be really fighting for a job this year. And he, he kind of imploded this year. I mean, this game today, he gave up two runs and one inning. Uh, Pete Solomon gave up five hits. Um, I know that he's probably not going to have a role to start off the season. They're probably going to stretch him out and have him ready to be a starter if needed at some point this season. But he still has a 2.25 ERA, but he allowed five hits and two innings today. Anoli Paredes is one of the guys that was a can't-miss prospect at one point. Or maybe not can't-miss, but he was a guy that the Astros were hoping to rely on. He um, he still has a zero ERA. He pitched one clean inning today. 
And Seth Martinez is a guy that Jake Kaplan uh, predict, projected to make the opening day roster. He pitched a clean inning he, uh, with two strikeouts. So this may be a, a dark horse to make the opening day roster. Yeah, I mean, he got the save, you know. Um, Muchinski and and Paredes both got the hold. I would really like to see Paredes get to the 2020 form that we saw him just how dialed in he was. If he can, again, if if he can get his mechanics down because he's so herky-jerky, he's such an asset because his attitude on the mound, his fire, his competitive nature is something you need in the bullpen. And this Martinez kid is really, really good. He's he's not talked about a lot, and I think he will pay dividends. Someone had mentioned earlier, you know, Yuli Gurriel, Eric, hit his third home run today, and he is just – He's hitting the cover off the ball. This he's dude's ready. lost five seventy one. He is ready, and he's getting older. And he's I won't, I won't say names, but there were people out there that were that were saying that Yuli's one of the worst aging first basemen in Major League Baseball. I know uh, Keith John Law. No, no, it was it was it was someone that's not a sports writer. It was just someone on Twitter. Oh, okay. um, and then Keith Law like didn't even call him one of the top first basemen in the league. Um, which I like, I really think that guy, all his, all his grades are suspect after that. Cause that's just ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Yuli Gurriel is an absolute professional and the sky's the limit for him this year. Yeah. He's also, like I said, he's playing for a contract this year. He knows he's an older um, veteran, so he's playing for a contract and he's going to have a great year. He lost a lot of weight. He stopped eating pizza and drinking the Coke. So um, we're going to see a different Yuli this year. And so uh, with, with the loss of, Car- loss of Carlos Correa and they're still trying to find a center fielder to replace George Springer, they're going to need people like Yuli Gurriel Alex Bregman. Well, I know Yuli had a great year last year. Let me not discount him, but uh, for if if his power comes up, that'll be great. And so, um, and no, yeah. then I think that Michael Brantley needs to take a, another step um, with the power wise. He's not a home run See, hitter. Well, no, I, okay. Let me just say this: power. He we don't yeah, we don't need Brantley hit for power. Yeah. yeah, we. I mean, think about it. You got Guriel. You got Bregman. You got Alvarez. Tucker. You got Alvarez. You got four power hitters right there. And if Altuve, even if he's not hitting for power, make no mistake, the kid's still going to hit the ball out of the park. Right. Because his workout regimen, his workout regimen is unbelievable. The dude's core is a, I mean, he's a freaking Greek god. The dude is chiseled. I mean, he is, he works. If, if you, if you look at people who study baseball swings, it's when that guy swings, Eric, it's like taking a spring and winding and like turning it as far as you can, twisting it and letting it go. And that's what happens when he brings it back forward. His body is in full motion. He puts the he puts the barrel of the bat towards the ball and he unloads all that power. And it comes from his feet through his mid 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 body out. And that's how he hits the ball with so much force. Okay. So the Astros have a lot of um, unknowns this year, but Jeremy Pena leading off. Would you, would Dusty Baker do that? I don't know. Uh, we'll have to continue this discussion on a future podcast. But guys, thank you for tuning in to Locked on Astros podcast. Why don't you tune in to Soli over at Locked on MLB podcast as well and continue listening to this conversation as we continue this, as we see the spring training progress towards opening day. And uh, we're going to have Mike, Mike Stanton on Wednesday's podcast for Thursday. So that'll be a great guest. And uh, we're looking to get uh, more guests on. And thank you for making Locked on Astros podcast your first listen every day. For Brett Chancy, I'm Eric Eisman. Thank you for listening. And go Stros. First pitch, pulls it, left field. That's going to get down. That's a base hit. That's going to knock in the game's first run. 
Altuve racing into second base, and he'll get there standing. It's a two-out double for Jose. The Astros up 1-0. Well, he got a first pitch breaking ball and decided. Two men in scoring position and two away. He's in the stretch. Here's the 0-2. Slider and is pulled through the left side for a base hit. One run will score. Hensley stops on third. It's an 0-2 single for Jeremy Pena, and the Astros lead 2-0 on the single. I think he got that breaking ball again. 